membrane transport, how things get across the cell membrane. What is diffusion? Explain how cells control what diffuses across their membranes. Compare and contrast active and passive transport. Compare and contrast endocytosis and exocytosis. I'm Mr. W from learn-biology.com where we guarantee your success in AP Biology. Please sign up for a free trial today. Diffusion is the tendency of molecules to spread out from where they're more concentrated to where they're less concentrated. So here you have some substance more concentrated over here, less concentrated over here. Here's ink going into a beaker, more concentrated, and then less concentrated. This happens spontaneously. It's based on the kinetic energy of the molecules. And a good way to envision this is to think of molecules as flowing down a concentration gradient from higher concentration to lower concentration. Explain how cells control what diffuses across their membranes. Diffusion is called passive transport, and that's because it requires no cellular energy. There are two forms. The first is simple diffusion across the phospholipid bilayer. That's what's shown up here. There are two things that can do simple diffusion. The first are any small nonpolar molecules such as oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide. The second are nonpolar substances such as steroid hormones or fats. Facilitated diffusion is for polar molecules and ions that can't diffuse across the phospholipid bilayer. So they require protein channels. And these are transmembrane proteins, they go all the way through, that only let specific molecules or ions pass. So over here you see one for glucose, over here you see one for amino acids, those are both polar molecules, and here you see one for an ion such as calcium. There'd be others for ions such as sodium or potassium. Compare and contrast active and passive transport. As you do, explain what powers each process. Passive transport is what we just discussed. It's when molecules or ions flow down a diffusion gradient. Here, more concentrated to less concentrated. And that's what it's all about. It's diffusion from high concentration to low concentration. It relies on the kinetic energy of the diffusing molecules or ions. It doesn't require cell energy. As you can see here, molecules are flowing down their concentration gradient. That's different from active transport where we're pumping a molecule or ion up its concentration gradient from lower concentration to higher concentration. Over here, lower concentration to higher concentration, that requires an energy expenditure on the part of the cell. Usually that's ATP that's being converted into ADP and phosphate to power the pumping process, but also the flow of electrons can power the pumping of protons, and that's important in the creation of ATP itself. Are you asking yourself, how am I going to get a 4 or a 5 on the AP Bio exam? It's a good question because it's a hard test, but we have a plan for your success. Go to learn-biology.com, sign up for a free trial, and complete our interactive tutorials and interactive AP Bio exam reviews. We guarantee you a 4 or a 5 on the AP Bio exam. See you on learn-biology.com. Compare and contrast endocytosis and exocytosis. These are both forms of bulk transport. In endocytosis, the membrane pinches in to surround a particle or some extracellular fluid, creating a cavity that can become a vesicle. In exocytosis, a vesicle containing something fuses with the membrane, and then that contents is dumped outside the cell. Both of these processes require energy on the part of the cell, and they both require the involvement of the cytoskeleton, which is changing the shape of the membrane. What is membrane potential? How do cells create membrane potential? How is membrane potential used? Membrane potential is an electrical charge across a membrane that creates a voltage difference. How is it created? Through cells expending energy to pump ions across their membranes. A key example, and this is a preview of a topic that we'll get into in Unit 3, is how mitochondria pump protons from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space. 
that gives the intermembrane space a positive charge relative to the matrix. So it has all these protons inside of it. And that creates an electrochemical gradient of voltage difference. And that pulls protons through this channel, it's called ATP synthase, back into the matrix, and that powers the creation of ATP. Some other examples, chloroplasts do pretty much exactly the same thing. And there's also a 70 millivolt charge across the membranes of nerve cells that makes nerve impulses possible. And that's how I am able to think and teach biology and how you are able to learn it. Is biology mind blowing or what? Want to learn more? Sign up for a free trial of the website that guarantees your AP biology success, learn-biology.com and watch this next video.